everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. There's a lot of fear and a lot of myths out there about the spread of the coronavirus. The risk of contracting the coronavirus on our wigs is very, very small. However, there are a few things as wig consumers we need to be aware of that might actually expose us to the virus. wig consumer, there are some fears out there uh, that maybe this coronavirus might hitch a ride on a brand new wig or somehow expose us to the virus without really us having any knowledge of it. And that's what makes this so dangerous, this virus, is that we're fighting an invisible enemy. A lot of the wig suppliers right now are taking special measures to protect their employees as well as the consumer to debate any medical knowledge about this. I just simply want to frame this with a little bit of context. The experts are saying that on plastic it can live up to three days, on cardboard 24 hours. This also depends on the conditions that the virus is being exposed to. Humidity, temperature, and other conditions can affect the viability and longevity of the virus. So how does that affect us as wig consumers? Our wigs are man-made. They're made of plastic, man-made polymers, such as acrylic, PVC, vinyl. So because it is mostly a man-made plastic, it seems conceivable that these fibers um, might hold on to the virus for two to three days, right? depending on the environmental conditions. Some of you may have some fear that these viruses might just hit you right on your wig directly to your house. I think that's very unlikely and here's why. So first of all, if the virus actually could sort of be viable on these fibers, um, it usually takes a minimum of two to three days for that wig package to get to your house. And that's if somebody touched that wig that had the virus on their hands right before shipping, which is unlikely because typically it's in the box, the inspections have already taken place, and it's probably sitting in the warehouse ready to be ready for an order to be fulfilled. So the fact is that it's probably been sitting there for days and also then it's packaged up and sent to you and it takes two to three days. So nobody probably has handled the wig fiber itself for many, many days before it gets to you and by that time any of the virus would be died off. So now that we've determined that contracting the virus from our wigs or the wig packaging is probably very, very unlikely. So what do we need to be concerned about? Well, we know that the, the virus can be viable on cardboard for up to 24 hours, right? So there would be some concern that your mail courier or your FedEx guy or your UPS guy might cough or sneeze in their hands and actually contaminate the cardboard box as they put it on your doorstep. So what do you do? Um, if you're like me, I'm going to put on a pair of uh, plastic gloves um, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to pick up that package and I'm going to set it in a safe area and I'm going to leave it sit there for a minimum of 24 hours. But I do think there is another risk that we need to consider as wig wearers and just remembering that the main entry points for the virus to, to, to go into your body is through the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So the experts are saying, wash, wash, wash your hands all the time, and also make sure you don't touch your face. So in the grocery store, you're generally, you, look, you do a lot of looking down, you looking up and around just to, to kind of get an idea of what you are gonna pick up and buy, right? Um, but what I found was all of those motions, like if I bend down to pick up an onion out of the bin and put it in the plastic bag, my hair fell in my face. And it's just instinct, right? Just to go in there and kind of sweep the hair away. I caught myself doing that. It was just automatic. I didn't even think of it. I was so careful, you know, not to scratch my nose, not to rub my eye. But when that hair got in my eye from my wig, I was just an immediate knee-jerk reaction to pull it out. If you're heading out into the grocery store or the bank or you know whatever may be open that's a necessity for you to go to, uh, just be very careful about the wig that you wear. If you are wearing a style that constantly gets into your face and eyes, you're probably gonna have the same reaction as I did. Sweeping it out of the eyes, potentially uh, putting yourself at risk by touching your face. So I suggest that when you do go out, that you wear a style that is maybe a straight across cross band, you know for sure it's not get, going to get in your face, or a couple of different things. You can take some pins, pin it back. You can wear a headband such as this. Also wear a ball cap. 
that keeps the longer sides out of the face without danger of it getting in your eyes. So I suggest just doing something. Be aware that by sweeping hair out of your eyes can put you at risk for contracting uh, not only the coronavirus but influenza or any other viruses and germs out there. So I don't have any fear that the coronavirus is going to hitch a ride on my new wig uh, or its packaging. Uh, but I will be very careful about the courier and how that's delivered to the home. I will also be very careful about the wig style that I wear when I go out to the grocery store or if I'm going to be in contact with anything in a public space. I hope this information was helpful to you. We'll see you next time on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.